What's up guys, Axis here, and today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial in After Effects on a third party plugin called Plexus. And um, I will actually show you some final uh, kind of bits from uh, what you can do with Plexus. So uh, this is from my uh, official motion pack, which is on my store. You'll probably find it in the description. But as you can see, it creates this really nice kind of these little. Uh, Join net effects and stuff that you can use. Um, you can obviously make bigger bits and stuff. And I've used depth of field in my camera just to um, make the flexes look even better. So it's a really, really powerful plugin. And um, I'm just going to be showing you how I do some of my stuff. Obviously, all these settings can be tweaked to your liking. So I'm just going to create a new composition, and it's 720 at 30 frames per second at whatever duration you're wanting. So I'm doing 15 seconds. And then what we're going to want to do is create a text layer. This is probably the easiest way to uh, do plexus. So I'm just going to call this plexus. And I'm just going to be using probably Times New Roman, because it's a standard font. I'm not going to be me messing about with the uh, font, because it doesn't really matter. But it does kind of uh, matter if the uh, font is quite thin. You're not going to want that because um, obviously you need quite a lot to work with. So um, I don't know. I might just use this not because I really like the font, but because the um, the font is quite a big size and the um, strokes are quite large. So in effects and presets, type in Plexus, and you should find Plexus here if you've installed the plugin. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go on to Paths for the uh, Geometry. And as you can see already, it's created um, a kind of traced effect around it. Uh, and then I'm going to be adding a Noise from the Effector section. Points. Uh, points might already be here. Yep, Points is already here. Uh, don't add Points, because it's already here. Um, then I'm going to add Lines and Triangulation. So just add triangulation and there you go. So um, first up I'm going to be going into my, I'm just going to switch off triangulation because it's just really annoying when you're trying to work with some of the stuff. So first off I'm going to go to my uh, replication tab inside path object and I'm going to create uh, three copies and I'm going to change the extrude depth to a thousand. Uh, you can animate this to uh, kind of bring all the text back to uh, the original which looks really nice and I've got a, a little project file in here for it but today I'm just going to be sticking to kind of creating the abstract uh, stock effect in the background and I'm just going to close up replication and I'm going to go into noise. Now noise is a uh, kind of effect that is going to really start breaking up some of these uh, different splines and stuff in here so I'm going to probably put this on a thousand and we'll just work from that. So as you can see already we've got a really cool effect. There's not much depth to it but it's great already. Um, so in points I'm just going to change the point size to one um, obviously all these can be changed up um, and lines I like to kind of turn down the lines a bit on the maximum distance because I just think it looks a lot better with less lines rather than having tons and tons looking like um, kind of random spider web thing so something like that And um, now I'm going to probably switch on back on triangulation. So just click the FX button, and I'm going to turn down the uh, maximum distance again. Also, the uh, max number of vertexes. Um, you can turn that down as well to change some of the um, settings a bit more as well. 
So as you can see, that's a, that's already a pretty nice effect, but we don't really have any depth, color, or anything to it. So I'm probably just going to add a new solid, Control Y. I'm going to create a black solid. Just going to call this background, and then drag it below the uh, plexus text. And I'm going to get a little ramp here. In uh, CS6 and below, I, I believe it's called ramp, but in this it's called gradient ramp. I'm in CC. Um, so I'm just going to do a simple ramp effect, probably going from kind of like an orangey red. And I'm just going to switch this to radial. I might actually swap colors. This option isn't available in the uh, previous versions, so you have to do it manually. And I'm just going to go blend this a bit more with the original and also maybe turn up the scatter that might be a bit too much, I'll go 50 <coughs> alright there we go I'm just gonna keep messing with this until I get something that looks a bit better right there we go and now I'm gonna create a camera by doing Control Shift Alt and C and I'm just going to start off by checking depth of field. I'm going to be using a standard preset of 50 millimeters. Um, I might change this. So, um, yeah, you just want to use this just to get an idea. And then if we go to our camera move tool up here, you can see once we go through this that none of the uh, the depth of field has actually been applied yet because we haven't um, allowed it to be rendered. So as you can see, if we click on our Plexus text, you'll have Plexus, which is right at the bottom, and Camera Settings for Depth of Field is the only option, so it would be a lot easier to choose. But as you can see already, this is looking really nice. And uh, if you want to just mess about with some of the uh, Depth of Field settings, because this might be a bit strong, distance aperture camera settings are really annoying because if you go up a bit too far it will try and load it then you when you try and undo it obviously it's still trying to load it so it's gonna probably like mess up after effects right now okay I'm just gonna turn this back down Fact, I'm probably going to cancel this because I think I've messed up the camera settings a bit. I'm going to go back into them and I might mess about with some of the sizes as well. Facts. I'm just going to go 35. And then when you zoom in, you'll see all the other blurred parts around here. Blur level is probably something that I might be interested in. So I've set that to 50. Here are my uh, camera settings just in case you want to check them out. Use them from reference, uh, or for reference, I mean. Um, so, yeah. Mess about with. Oh, I keep clicking enter. <laughs> 10. Stop clicking enter. Uh, 1. Let's go for 4. Alright, there we go. That is not perfect, but it will have to do. So, now what I'm going to do is add a glow. If you want your glow to really stand out, there's a great way of doing this by going into your project and going into uh, this 8BPC thing here. Go into your color settings and underneath, uh, as a child of that, you'll see this 8 bits per ch uh, channel, which should be the default on your After Effects unless you've changed it. You change it to 32 bits per channel, um, which will greatly um, increase the render times in some of the previews, but it is a great effect um, and it also adds the glow a, bit, a lot more harshly to this. So obviously I'm going to want to turn this down by just messing about with some of these settings. 
Also, you might want to even add some color now. So you can do that through the uh, glow. Um, I'll just show you a couple methods. So glow colors, original colors changes to AB colors. And now that is corresponding to these AB colors down here. If I change this to, for example, like a really light, uh, let's try a, let's just try and mess about with these until I actually get some. <laughs> um, so as you can see, when I change them, uh, the glow can actually be seen on them. And I'm probably going to put the radius really high. Because, um, the glow is quite harsh. And then also I may even want to change the colour of the overall plexus, so by that I'm going to go and either you can use the tint, which is kind of a built-in plugin, uh, curves even, but I'm going to be using VC Colour Vibrance, uh, VC being Video Copilot. It's actually a free plugin by them, probably, probably a first for them actually. They don't normally release free stuff, so um, yeah, just go and check that out. You just drag it into your um, After Effects and you should get it. So, I don't really like this colour obviously because it's not matching the scene at all. Maybe a bit harsh. So hopefully you kind of get the idea of uh, what I'm trying to do with the Plexus. Obviously it's not perfect but it is a tutorial, so um, I'm trying not to waste up too much time here, even though I am. <laughs> uh, so also, lastly, you could probably add some color correction. So looks, which is another another uh, third-party plugin, which um, you could also kind of replicate the looks of with um, the kind of built-in uh, part stuff of After Effects like uh, curves and stuff like that so I just add some curves here oh, there uh, are built-in curves as I just said so you may want to use that so I'm just gonna mess about with the blues maybe turn down the darks of the blues and I might also add a bit more exposure here just to compensate for the uh, the um, curves that I just added and then I've added a edge softness here, which I'm probably going to drag down a bit so it focuses on the center part. So obviously this is really blurry now, so you know it's an intro by me. Um, axis. And then if you want to kind of track a 2D thing in here, obviously you're going to need to switch on the 3D. So uh, now if I move the camera back and forward, you're going to see that this moves with the uh, camera. So normally what I do is I go into position and animate the position from point A to B. And I'll just zoom in on the, on the Z axis. And as you can see now, we'll have a really nice animation. this whole thing you might want to add some rotation or whatever I might also move this back a bit into the plexus and below the color correction so it matches so obviously I'm just doing kind of touch up stuff uh, it's not really difficult to do it's just some drop shadows um, onto my text layer so um yeah that's also looking pretty good for um just 12 minutes of what I'm um, messing about with Plexus so um yeah it's a really good plugin obviously and there's just a lot of capabilities and stuff that comes with this plugin so I'd highly recommend getting it just mess about with some of the settings that I gave you some of the camera stuff that I gave you and remember to comment below, um, just give me some more suggestions for tutorials that I can do and stuff like that. Um, so I'll see you guys next time.